There's a crossroad before me, and none of the avenues are appealing. Either one will lead to life-changing events. Indecision will definitely be worse than any of the options. However, it is an opportunity to earn a substantial amount of money. I'm talking somewhere in the ballpark of seven figures. Could be that it ends up ruining everything I've ever worked for, though. Now, I've been given a small window of time here to reach out and seek advice as to what I should do. But first, let me explain the situation. I was on the deep web a few days ago. No, not doing anything illegal. I frequently go there to read articles and news stories from highly censored countries. I'm a musician, you see, and these stories give me material. I like to think of myself as a voice for the underrepresented and the oppressed, shedding a light on those that can't make their situation known. I made a comment on an article I was reading then went to look at some other stuff, but I came back to that article because there was something there that stuck with me. Notice that my comment had gotten a reply. The reply was fairly poignant and it moved me, so I responded. Then the other person replied and we started a pretty in-depth conversation for a while, which is rare online, especially when you're completely anonymous. We finished our talk and were saying our goodbyes when he posted something that made my blood run cold. It was only a few words. But it was enough to scare me. He posted, Good night, Stephen. He knew my name, but I never told him my name. There was about six layers of security on my computer, and they somehow still found out my name. Not only was there the protection that the Tor server offered, but I had firewalls, VPN, and encryption on board. Could have been a lucky guess, but the fact that my webcam was on when I hadn't turned it on told me that that wasn't the case. A cold sweat drenched my body as I ripped the power cord to my computer tower out of the wall. Hold on, you might say to yourself. You weren't in any shady sites. You didn't go to some weird place with cryptic messages or find an active camera with some guy in a crazy mask. How could this happen? Well, let me tell you. The whole deep web is in some crazy place. Even Facebook has a community there. It's more like a big city. Most of the time, if you stay on the main roads, you're fine. Don't go down any dark alleys looking for trouble, and you won't find any. Sometimes though, sometimes trouble finds you. My hope was that it was only some teen in their mom's basement that happened to be really good at hacking, and they were trying to troll me or something. You know, get a rise out of me, spook me. Well, it worked. Barely slept at all that night knowing that some stranger out there may have access to information on me that I wouldn't want them to know. Finally, after repeating the little story to myself about it being a teenager, I was able to fall asleep. The next day was Saturday. My fiancé was out of town and I didn't have anything major planned. So I woke up and I did my usual. Put together and submitted my grocery list for the week on my smart fridge set up my next week of appointments on Alexa, and checked my phone for any messages I might have missed, then headed off to take a shower. I planned on booting up my laptop later to see if there had been any suspicious activity on my bank account or anywhere else I could think of. Got into the shower, started doing my thing, was washing my hair, when all of a sudden a scalding, burning pain shot up my whole body. It was the most intense sensation believable. It felt like fire was coming straight out of my shower head. I jumped through the shower curtain and out of the tub without thinking, got caught up in that plastic part and fell face first onto the bathroom floor, nearly breaking my nose. When I got untangled, the steam was thick enough that you couldn't see your hand in front of your face. It was difficult to breathe such superheated air, but I managed to open the door and let the steam out before turning off the water. Red splotches covered my entire back, and I was pretty sure blisters were already forming. My phone dinged. It was the Ring app alerting me that someone was at the front door. The repairman was already here. My water heater had notified the company that there was a problem. There wasn't time to think that it was odd my water heater app hadn't told me something was wrong earlier. Searing pain muddled my thought process. I was relieved that someone was here to deal with the situation. Quickly I threw on some pants and hurried to let the repairman in, showed him to the heater, then left to treat my burns. While slipping my shirt on, the Ring app dinged again. This time, it was the grocery deliverer. I told her to come in and that I'd be down in a second. By the time I was ready, the delivery girl had brought everything in and was waiting by the door for me to sign off. 
gave her a little hello, then complimented her on her nail polish. Not something I would usually do, but it was a crazy design. Kind of a heart with wings on it, and a nice green color. After a fast signature, off she went. While she was backing down the driveway, it dawned on me. The sign on the side of her van wasn't my usual delivery service. I ran to the kitchen and couldn't believe my eyes. There must have been 500 pineapples all over the place. The receipt she left had the number for the delivery service, which I called immediately. We argued for a good 10 minutes, but there was nothing they would do for me. They couldn't take back fresh produce once the delivery person was gone. I was stuck with all of that fruit and the bill. My head was still reeling when the repairman came back up. He told me there had been a software issue, but he reinstalled it and everything seemed fine. He left after I paid him for the service call. By then, my head was hurting from all of my problems. Went to the living room and slumped onto the couch trying to make sense of what had just happened. When I remembered, it would be a good idea to go and check my laptop. Alexa, I said somewhat jokingly, remind me to shoot myself later. A male voice then came through the speakers which made me jump with a start. That won't be necessary, mate. We're just playing a little game, a bit of sport if you will. Who the hell is this? I asked. You'll never know who this is, but after our conversation last night, I could tell you're a smart man. Just the type we want for our challenges. I couldn't tell if this was some weird practical joke or what. The man's accent was impossible to place. Sounded like someone faking it to hide who he really was. All I knew is he didn't sound like anyone I had ever known. I'm not playing any games. I'm calling the police. No, you won't. Your phone now has that feature disabled, the man said. Then the sound of all my windows and doors locking echoed in my ears. You gotta love all these new smart devices. Convenient that at the push of a button, you can know you are secure. Or someone else can make sure of that for you. I'll unplug you, I said and yanked out the power cord for Alexa. Then I went and turned off my router. My fingers flew in a desperate fury trying to regain access to my phone when my ring app alerted me someone was at the door. Went to check, but no one was there. Then the same man's voice came through my phone. Look, mate, it doesn't matter what you do. We have everything accessed through a hotspot. You really should stay with the repairman when he works on your things. Don't blame him, though. He was just playing the pot in his own little game, same as the delivery girl. Speaking of which, Right about now, you should hear a ticking sound. I'll give you a hint. It's in your kitchen. You got about five minutes to find it, or you'll learn the real definition of the term, pineapple grenade. In a flash, I bolted to the kitchen and started to chuck pineapples left and right in the hopes that one of them would feel different. One minute has passed, the man said over my phone. Didn't know what I was looking for, but hoped I would know it when I saw it. Two minutes gone, he said again. Sweat stung my eyes as I realized that I was looking through ones that were already checked. From then on, I threw the ones that were inspected out into the living room. Three minutes done, he said. Hands were raw and hurt from the prickly parts of the pineapples, and my arms grew tired from throwing them. Perspiration poured down my face as my heart beat irregularly fast. Fear grabbed hold of me. It's in the top ten scariest moments of my life which at that time depended on me recognizing anything out of the ordinary. Four minutes have passed, he said. This is impossible. They all look the same, I said, hands trembling and tears welling in my eyes. I never said it was a pineapple. Only a pineapple grenade, the man told me. That's when I finally stopped and began to listen. The ticking sound wasn't coming from any of the fruit. My ears focused in on a sound from a nearby kitchen cabinet. A speedy once over revealed that there were no trip wires or electrical devices on the outside. As far as I could tell, there was no trap, so I opened the cupboard. Inside was a recording device set on a timer. The ticking sound had only been a recording. In anger, I grabbed the recorder and threw it on the ground. A sense of relief washed over me as it smashed into pieces. Laughter erupted from my phone. Not just one guy, but a whole group of people could be heard. Guys, girls, and possibly a donkey, not really sure, but the laugh was just awful. See, mate? It's all in good fun. Just play along with us and you'll be rewarded. 
don't, and, well, let's say things won't end well for you. What kind of reward, I asked? Money. Lots and lots of money. If you play your cards right. If you don't, then everything ends. That proposition definitely had me intrigued. Maybe I'd be able to pay off my student and credit card debt, get a nicer place, and finally afford to marry my girl. So far, the game didn't seem too bad. Also, it didn't seem like I had a choice. Knowing they had been in my house, hijacked all my electronics, and were somehow watching me, had me a bit jarred to say the least. If anything, it felt like an impromptu episode of a television show, something along the lines of Fear Factor or one of those survival shows, you know? So I agreed to join in. The first real test begins now. According to your fridge, you have some lemon juice in there. You also have some salt in the cupboard. Now, there's two choices. You can either squirt lemon juice in your eye, or snort a line of salt. $25 on the salt, I heard a different voice say. 50 on the lemon juice, came a female's voice. They were betting on me. It was a little weird to hear a bunch of different people egging me on in ways to hurt myself. But in the end, I chose the lemon juice. Cheers and boos erupted over my phone as pain coursed through my eyes. Foot stomping, head holding, eye gouging pain. It took a bit of time to recover from, but eventually the irritation subsided and we went on. While we've been talking, there's been a delivery, the man said. I want you to go out and get the packages. We'll unlock the door for you now. I did what he said and went to retrieve two packages from my stoop. He told me to open them. Inside both boxes was a snake. Judging by their attitude, neither was happy where they were. Inside one box is a cottonmouth snake. Inside the other one is a northern water snake. One is deadly venomous, the other is not. You'll need to stick your hand in there because there's something important inside for the next task. You gotta be kidding me. I'm not sticking my hand in there. Think about the money, mate. Don't worry. By the time you're done, there will be anti-venom outside your door. We aren't savages. It's just for sport. The pain will be unbelievable, though. But what's a little pain? The man asked as other voices rose in a chant of, Do it! Do it! A look in both boxes revealed a wrench in each one. That was what I had to get, I supposed. It was hard to tell the snakes apart. Each one looked identical to the other. A couple of deep breaths and I threw a hand in. Sharp needles pierced my skin and a burn raged up my arm. My fingers found the steel at the bottom of the box and I quickly yanked it out. The snake was stuck to my hand and came out with it. Legs turned to jelly at the sight of having been bit. A fast snap down in my hand sent the snake back into the box before I collapsed on the floor. Not sure if I passed out, but things went out of focus for a minute before I came back around. Steven! Steven, you're a madman! Ha ha ha! Most people quit right there, but not you! I knew you had it in you. Anti-venom! I need the anti-venom, I said. Relax, Stevie boy. Neither of those snakes were venomous. You'll probably have a scar, but that's about it. You're sick. You're all sick. You sit there and bet on my suffering, I told them. Calm down, Stevie. It's all in good fun. All in good fun. The bets are how you make your money. I could have died. But you didn't. I'm done. I quit. This is too much mental anguish. You're a bunch of sadists. No, you don't quit now. You already agreed to play, and once in, there is no backing out. You're in too deep to back out now. We have good money riding on you. The lock on the door slid back closed with a pop. What's stopping me from breaking the glass and just getting out a window, I asked. Benny, what are the odds that he makes it out through a window before the sniper gets him? A red dot magically appeared on the carpet about a foot in front of me and slowly traveled up my body. About a hundred to one in the books. Huge payout if he's successful, but it's unlikely, Benny replied. Yeah, so, you know, you could try, but it doesn't look good for you, mate. See, we have two different types of games here. You're on the extreme challenge since I like you so much. The other two were on the pranks challenge. You'll make more money than them, but the difficulty is much, much higher. I put you here because I knew you're a smart guy. 
I had heard, one time, something about cooking a frog, to put it in cold water and gradually raise the temperature. If you put it in boiling water, it would immediately jump out. Put it in cold water and raise the temperature slowly to a boil, and it will sit there till it died. It seemed like I was the frog, and the water was boiling now. I'd have jumped out, but the lid had been hammered on. So here's the deal, mate. You make it for three days and we leave you alone. You fail to comply, or you don't finish a task, and you die. Oh, and at the end, we give you a portion of the earnings for a job well done. Don't let your phone die either, or that's an automatic termination. We need that to keep in contact with you. How wonderful, I answered. From here on out, the challenges increase. By this time, you may smell something similar to rotten eggs. That would be a gas leak. Also, I've taken the liberty to turn on your oven. You need to find the leak and stop it before your house goes kaboom. As an added bonus, we will be playing the national anthem of the USSR over your speakers for the next 24 hours. Comrade Peshkov paid extra for that, so that's not negotiable. He's a sadistic bastard. I ran downstairs as quickly as I could while Russian voices sang to the motherland. The fumes down there were so strong that my head quickly began to ache. I searched the furnace since that was where the gas came in. There was no visible leak. By this time, my vision was beginning to blur and my thoughts became sluggish. It felt like forever, but in actuality, it was probably less than five minutes when I found a spray bottle labeled soap water at the bottom of the stairs. It took a bit for my addled brain to clue in what I could use it for. Then once I realized it must have been left by the repair guy, I took it and started to spray all the gas lines to look for bubbles. I finally found a loose connection and began to tighten it with my hands, but that wasn't doing much. Like lightning, the thought of the wrench upstairs sprung into my mind. I used that to tighten the connection and closed off the leak. Sprays around the rest of the pipes gave no more bubbles, so I went back upstairs to find my phone. You were slow. That's gonna be a low payout. But at least you did it. You'll find two windows have been unlocked. You have permission to open them to air the place out. I threw open the windows then stuck my head out and vomited all over the side of the house. For a second I thought about screaming for help. Then I saw the red dot on the side of my house and thought better of it. Once recovered, they gave me similar tasks like the one I had just done. Seems that repair guy had been busy in the short time he was in the place. Then again, if the pressure on him was anything like it was on me, I would have been fast too. It was 18 hours of running around and finding traps they had set up all over the place, all while the USSR National Anthem blared on repeat. I'd get scored on how difficult the task was and how quickly I accomplished it. At 2 in the morning, they finally told me to go to my room and get some rest, but I couldn't sleep a wink with that dreadful song playing. I remember to charge my phone at least. The next morning, when I came downstairs, the whole place had been rearranged. It didn't even look like my house anymore. Welcome to day two, and do we have a treat for you. You'll notice that things are a bit different. We had some interior decorators come in to spruce the place up. There are trip wires and booby traps you'll have to get around now. Your first task is simple. Make it to the other end of your house. On the banister, you'll find a set of wire cutters. Good luck. At least by this time the anthem had stopped playing. Still, with no sleep for the last 24 hours, the task was more than difficult. Once or twice while walking I felt the pull of a wire string and stopped just before I tripped it. It took four hours for me to make it to the other side of the house. You have no idea what that does to your nerves. My hands were visibly shaking. If I had anything in my stomach, I probably would have chucked that up as well. Once again they gave me more tasks. Some had time limits on them and were made more difficult because I had to search every door or hallway I went down for trip wires. I did trip one in the hallway and a large spike dropped from the ceiling just inches from me. Another of the challenges was to find my laptop and get online. They had it hidden somewhere but put a tracking chip on it. Sounds easy but it wasn't. For this they let me go outside into the backyard. For some people that might have given them a chance to signal someone for help. I, on the other hand, had a tall security fence around the yard. No one could see in, and no one could see out. Landmines had been placed in places which I had to avoid. One trap caught me by surprise when I stepped on a trigger plate. 
A sixteen penny nail was driven through my foot by a nail gun in a bush. I wanted to curl up from the pain, but couldn't let myself fall for fear of setting off something worse. Finally did find my laptop and was able to take it inside. They gave me a deep web address to get on, which I did. At first, there was nothing there. It was hard to tell what I was looking at, the screen was all black. Then a single light turned on. I was seeing a room somewhere. It was dark and empty except for a chair that had someone tied to it with a burlap sack over their head. Instantly I recognized them. On their hand they had painted nails. Some sort of heart with wings on it in a bright green color. I let out a gasp. So you recognize her? You've seen those fingernails before? Yesterday. She was the delivery girl, I said. She failed in one of her tasks. Good news though, you can redeem her. The man paused and I could hear some whispering in the background. Right then, he continued. The votes are in. You get the riddle. The riddle? That's it? I didn't tell them that I'm good with riddles. Being a songwriter, I've always had a way with words. Answer all of them correctly and she walks out unharmed. Get it wrong, or not in the time limit, and she loses her finger. Here is the riddle. Which of these words don't fit in the group and why? Corset, coaster, escort, sector, and quartz. You have 30 seconds to answer. Fortunately, I was at my kitchen counter and had a pen and a memo pad handy. Wrote the words down in a fury and looked at each one to think about them. It came to me almost immediately. Quartz doesn't belong. The other words are anagrams. Next riddle. Same time limit. This time, if you get it wrong, she'll lose a forearm. Here is the riddle. My tongue is long, my breath is strong, and yet I breed no strife. My voice you hear, both far and near, yet I have no life. What am I? I thought about it. My mind drew blanks every time I thought I might have something. The sound of a clock ticking came over the phone. This frustrated me even more. The pressure built until I thought my head was going to explode. Ten. Nine. Eight. Seven. Six. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. Time's up. With that, a hand reached out of the darkness and grabbed her by the arm. Silver flashed across the screen and with a sickening thump her forearm was lopped off and fell to the floor. Blood spurted out for about a foot and covered everything in its path with a bright red. Vomit rose to the back of my throat, but I managed to force it down again. Are we done? Can she go now? Hasn't she earned her freedom? We're not done yet. One more riddle. Big money riding on this one, Stevie boy. And her life. A tourniquet was applied to her stump to stop the bleeding. Then the large silver blade came out of the darkness one more time and was placed gently on her neck. She recoiled from the feeling of cold steel on her skin, but despite her efforts, she couldn't get away. Last riddle. It can't be seen. It can't be felt. It can't be heard and can't be smelt. It lies behind stars and under hills, in empty holes it fills. It comes first and follows after. Ends life and kills laughter. What is it? Shaken from the last failure, there wasn't much I could think of. No. Please no. Don't, don't do this to me. Don't do this to her. She doesn't deserve this. Let her go. Let her go and I'll play along for an extra day. Can't do that, mate. That's not the rules. You each have your own game to play. She's playing hers right now and so are you. I couldn't give up. I had to keep thinking of what the answer could be. Ten. Nine. Eight. Seven. Six. Five. Four. Three. Two. I don't know from what corner of my mind the answer came from, but with one second left I blurted out the first word that came to me. Darkness. The answer is darkness. One. The knife pulled back like it was going to swing, hesitated for a moment, and then disappeared into the black recesses of the room. We have a winner! The voice came through loud and clear. My knees gave way as I dropped to the ground crying. 
I could hear the woman in the room crying as well. Thank you. Thank you, she said in between sobs. The camera feed was cut. I was left there hoping they kept their word and let her go. You are to retire to your room for the rest of the night. Tomorrow is the final day. We have a big surprise for you. In the night, sometimes I thought about running. Death would have been better than this, but there was still a good chance of making it out. The odds of outrunning a sniper bullet didn't appeal to me. 100 to 1, they said, were the odds. Those words rang in my mind whenever I thought about escape. In the silence of my room, with nothing to occupy my thoughts except to recap the last few days, I was frequently one step away from a complete mental breakdown. Instead, sleep eventually took me. The next morning, I woke up to my phone alarm going off. They must have set it for me when I was asleep. Groggily, I went to turn off the alarm, only to notice that the battery was at 1%. In all the chaos of what had happened yesterday, I must have forgotten to plug it in. In the rush to find my charge cord, my phone died. A bullet tore through my window while I hurriedly plugged in the charger. Another round came in through a wall as my cell booted up. Then a third and fourth one left holes in the wall next to me. Funny thing was that I didn't hear a report from the rifle that was being used. Whether they had some kind of silencer on it or what, I don't know. Finally, it booted up and my ring app activated. Thought we lost you there for a second. It would have been a pity since you made it this far. Only one challenge today and then we're done. But it will be the toughest one yet. My mind reeled in what this all could entail. One single challenge, but like I said, the hardest one you face so far. Do this and you make over eight million dollars. Untraceable in an offshore bank account. The account number will be texted to you as soon as you are done. Don't do this and remember those pineapples? Well, they really were grenades. All set to explode and send you to kingdom come. What do I have to do? Eight million dollars was way more than I expected. Still, my stomach sank with the prospect. I had overcome so much already, I really didn't know what else they could send my way. There was a sneaking suspicion I wouldn't like it though. The sniper is gone, so you could run. But be warned if you do, the bombs will go. Can you make it far enough away to be safe? Probably not. On the other hand, pardon the pun, you'll get that joke in a minute. On the other hand, downstairs you'll find a very keen meat cleaver, sharp enough to cut something in one blow, and a cutting board. Also, well, I want you to see it so you can fully understand. Go downstairs now. When I got downstairs, the whole place had been put back the way it was. It looked like nothing had ever happened. The pineapples were spaced out evenly through the house to make sure there was nowhere to hide. Then, when I reached the kitchen, I saw the biggest and worst surprise of all. The scream died in my throat, then turned to tears of rage. In the corner, tied up and gagged, was my fiancé. We saw on your schedule that Monday morning is breakfast with the 2B misses. What a wonderful way to start the week. We had our men greet her at the door for you. She is unharmed, mostly, but I suspect very confused and shocked by these turn of events. Here's the deal. I was talking about that cleaver. What we want you to do is decide whether to take your hand or hers. It'll be your right hand or her left one. Absolutely not, I said. There was an audible click and all the pineapples had flashing lights coming through their skin. We understand this is a big decision. We'll give you some time to think about it. How does 40 minutes sound? At that time, if you haven't come to a decision, we blow the pineapples up, along with you and your woman. We'll even give you opportunity to get advice as to what you should do. Don't try to call the cops or BOOM! We see police coming to your house, also BOOM! You could try answers or some kind of app or site. The choice is yours. Remember, 40 minutes, or boom. And that brings us to what I need help with, and why I'm talking to you right now. I'm standing here, meat cleaver in hand, and I got a question for you. 
I could try to run, but honestly, I don't think I'd make it. My right hand is important to my work and livelihood. Music is my life. Without it, I don't know what I would do. Go insane, I guess. Of course, they'd make me take my fiancé's left hand. That way, I won't be able to put a wedding ring on her finger. I don't think she'll be happy with me for choosing my music over her hand either. Music is my life, but she is my world. How could I even think about hurting her? But how could I live without making music again? So help me out here. Give me ideas or something to go on. My brain isn't working right right now. What should I do?